Hi everybody, this is Rob Swatsky from the York Campus of Hack, and in this podcast I'll be focusing on skin wound healing. Wound healing is another aspect of homeostasis that the skin is responsible for. When skin is damaged, a series of events is triggered that restores skin to its normal or close to normal structure and function. Depending upon how deep the injury, there are two types of wound healing, epidermal wound healing and deep wound healing. Epidermal wound healing takes place when injuries occur that only damage the epidermis, such as scrapes, abrasions, and minor burns. Upon injury to the epidermis, cells in the stratum basale on either side of the wound detach from the basement membrane, enlarge, and begin migrating across the wound. When the epidermal cells from both sides meet each other, they stop migrating as a result of a cellular response called contact inhibition. Epidermal growth factor hormone is secreted, which causes the stratum basale cells to divide and replace the ones that have migrated into the wound. These cells can now divide further and form new strata, which thickens the repaired epidermis. Deep wound healing takes place when the injury affects the dermis and subcutaneous layer. This process is more involved due to the diverse types of tissues that are damaged as a result of these sorts of injuries. Deep wound healing also generates scar tissues, so the healed tissue will often not be 100% back to its normal functions. There are four phases involved in deep wound healing. The inflammatory phase, a migratory phase, a proliferative phase, and a maturation phase. In the inflammatory phase, a blood clot forms in the wound and weakly bonds with the edges of the wound. During inflammation, a series of events takes place that serves to help destroy microbes, foreign matter, and dead dying tissues. In order to bring more white blood cells to the scene of the deep wound, vasodilation of the blood vessels occurs. And as the blood vessels become more permeable, this allows the phagocytic white blood cells, such as the neutrophils and monocytes, to emigrate out of the bloodstream and into the affected area. In the second phase, the migratory phase, the blood clot forms into a dried scab and the epithelial cells migrate underneath to bind the wound. Fibroblasts begin secreting scar tissue, which consists of collagen fibers and blood vessels severed by the wound start to regrow. All of the tissue that is now filling up the wound is called granulation tissue. In the proliferative phase, lots of growth occurs. Epithelial cells under the scab begin to grow more rapidly. More collagen is secreted by the fibroblasts and more blood vessels continue to grow. In the final maturation phase, the epidermis is back to its normal thickness. Damaged blood vessels are fully restored and the scab is shed. Fibrosis is the generation of scar tissue during deep wound healing. Scar tissue has more densely packed collagen fibers with reduced elasticity, reduced numbers of blood vessels, which gives scar tissue a lighter color, and depending upon the extent of the damage, fewer glands, sensory structures, or hair follicles. A raised scar can form when significant amounts of scar tissue develop as a result of the wound. This is called a hypertrophic scar if it stays within the confines of the original wound. A keloid scar extends beyond the wound and protrudes into normal tissues.